plenty of people filtering in. Just going to give everyone a minute or so to join the webinar. I can see at the bottom we've got all the participants in the webinar filtering in slowly. Um, so we'll give it a few seconds or so to make sure we've got as many people on board as possible and then we'll get underway. But thank you very much, everybody who's, who's joining us today. Really, really looking forward to the session. Well, good afternoon from uh, JYS in Chichester. I feel like a live radio host here. We've got everyone texting in, telling us where they're coming from. Always good. I think we've got, we're going to have a really good spread of people from, from up and down the UK and some people will be familiar with and some who um, might be joining one of these webinars for the first time and interacting with us as a charity for the first time. So it's great to have everyone on board. Um, I'll just start by saying that, um, again, thank you very much for joining. Um, today's session, as you would have seen, we're in for an hour, so we're due to finish around quarter past five. Um, we're going to try and be really tight on timings just for everyone's interest, because um, I know everybody would have had very busy days. It will seem like a, a long week, even though we're only on a Tuesday. And um, yeah, especially those of you out in the schools up and down the UK will be wanting to get home to your families, I'm sure. So we'll look for a hard cut off uh, at quarter past five. Um, I'll talk through the format of the day shortly, but we'll reserve the last 10 minutes so from around five o'clock for your questions. And um, hopefully, sadly, by now, we're all familiar with um, virtual webinars and Zoom and all of that, but you'll be used, I'm sure, to the Q&A function. Um, so we just use the Q&A chat, chat function at the bottom. Feel free if you want to ask the questions throughout the webinar once they pop into their head with your heads, but we'll, uh, we'll deal with them right at the end. And um, like myself or, or the panelists who we've got on board today, we'll, we'll help to answer them. Um, brilliant. So, so today's webinar, uh, as you would have seen, is it, all about Chance to Shine in partnership with Sports Trust and, and what we feel is the inspiring power of, of cricket as a sport and hopefully talking you through how that power can be, be harnessed out in the schools throughout the UK. Um, really, really pleased to have a fantastic group of panellists on board. So again, thank you very much to every one of them for joining. Um, I'll talk you through who they are one by one. So first of all, we've got Ian Gregory, close colleague of mine. So uh, Greg is, I think, around five years at Chance to Shine now, I saw, almost to the day. Um, he's one of our operations manager, so it managers, so he looks after um, our county boards and interacts with all the schools and community projects in, in the Midlands primarily, but knows cricket inside out, knows our programs as a charity inside out, and was a big part actually in um, the development of our latest set of resources, which are used in our programs across the country, something that he'll be talking a little bit more about in a minute. Alongside Ian, we've got Emma Mackenzie Hogg, who's a National Development Manager for the Youth Sports Trust. We have a close partnership with the Youth Sports Trust, and we are incredibly grateful for their support, especially to Emma, who's worked very hard on those resources that I mentioned just now, alongside Ian and the rest of the team. She'll be also speaking a little bit of, in a minute about the role of Youth Sports Trust and, and how they've been assisting us with that implementation, but great to have Emma here today. We've also got Rihanna Southby, who comes today with two hats, really. So first as a, as a top-level cricketer, a wicketkeeper batsman for, for Surrey, South East Stars, and in that fantastic competition, The 100, which many of you would have seen on BBC and on Sky Sports over the summer, where she, she plays for Roven Invincibles. Um, Rihanna is also a Chance to Shine ambassador, but also a coach for the charity as well. We're so we're lucky to have a number of um, professionals who play the game at a top level who also do some coaching in the community for us as a charity. So she can um, talk a little bit about that later on today. We've got James Watson, who's a PE lead at Heathfield Junior School in, in Twickenham in London. Um, a huge cricket fan, I know, uh, an expert in his field, also actually a former Chance to Shine Awards winner. We had our, we've got our awards coming up on Thursday this week and in his uh, previous life at Fairholme Primary, he helped them to win Primary School of the Year for the way that they had implemented cricket and, and Chance to Shine programmes in their school. So great to have James on board and again, really valuable input from him in terms of the best ways to embrace the sport. Um, and last but not least, we've got Dana abdul Karim. I said just now to Dana, when I was sending out some of the marketing materials around this webinar, I was trying to um, do a little five or six line bio for everybody for, for the emails we were sending out. And it was very, very difficult for Dana because um, there are a lot of very impressive strings to her bow. Um, she's currently Associate Assistant Principal at, at Dinnington High School in Yorkshire. 
She's a Chance to Shine trustee who sits on our board and provides valuable input from that point of view. Um, but also the first Muslim women to compete for England at, at any level, international level. 67 caps, I believe it was, um, in rounders. And yeah, uh, incredible, incredible uh, asset to us as a charity and great to have her on board today. So the first thing I want to do, and this is certainly not going to be death by PowerPoint, at least that's not my intention. I think a lot of this will be about interacting and hearing from panelists, people far more experienced uh, than myself. Um, who I should introduce myself really. So my name is Ross Jevons and I'm the Head of Communications and Digital at Chance to Shine. Um, so yeah, very, very passionate about the work we do and, and hopefully we can share some of that with you today. Um, first of all, Ian, you can give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. So I want to give you a very quick overview of who we are as a charity, Chance to Shine. And um, for those of you who have not interacted with us before, um, hopefully it'll, it'll give you an idea of where we come from and what we're about. Ian, I'm going to ask you, because I can see you on my screen, if there are any technical issues or someone puts in the chat, what's this man on about? Or I can't see a screen or I can't hear anything, just give me a shout and we'll, we'll try and deal with that as it comes. Um, we're all fine at the right moment, Ross. Right. We're, and I also caveat that with, as I was just telling the team, I managed to throw an entire cup of tea on my laptop this morning. So I'm on laptop number two for the day. So that, that's my uh, excuse if the technology goes wrong. Um, so who are Chance to Shine? We're an independent charity. Um, we've existed for almost 16 years now, or just over 16 years, actually. Um, originally, we were brought in in, in 2005, uh, famous year for cricket, for those of you who know the sport in terms of the, the Ashes series, the Flintoff, Peterson and all of that. Um, and the initial intention was to reinvigorate state school cricket. So our founders, Mark Nicholas, the broadcaster, Mervyn King, former governor of the Bank of England, and, and Duncan Fernley, the famous bat manufacturer, came together and wanted to solve the issue that they felt that the sport they loved wasn't um, widely accepted or widely accessible in, in state schools. Since then, well, I've put well over 5 million children, but I'd, I'd hazard a guess, and our impact and evaluation team would probably uh, shoot me for saying this without empirical evidence, but we're probably closer to 6 million now, actually, because that was a, a year or so, 18 months ago, uh, 5 million children. So almost 6 million children have progressed through our programme since that date. Um, on a year-by-year -year basis, we're around one in four primary schools um, in England and Wales. We've probably reached one in three throughout those 16 years to date um, and work with up to half, half a million, up to 600,000 children each year. Why do we exist? Ultimately, we want to provide a brilliant first experience of cricket for the pupils that we work with. And in doing so, in providing those opportunities for them to play a lot of the time for the first time, we want them to grow a lifelong love for the game. And um, we're really passionate and really proud about everything that the game can bring to them as individuals. And that's something that Ian's gonna speak a little bit about later. But I guess um, one of the things to consider is that any organization, especially any charity, we exist to solve a problem in many respects. And we believe that cricket is, is superb for the, the physical, the mental, the social, and the personal development of the kids we work with. And that's really, really important. This is taken from our latest impact report as a charity. Um, you'll all be familiar with these challenges, more familiar than me, I'm sure, because you're out there every day working with those children. So the problem of inactivity, the fact that 55% of these children are not getting the activity they need on a day by day basis. A lot of these issues have been exasperated by the pandemic, of course, as well. So the mental health and well-being issues, it's, it's gone from 10% in 2017 to 16% of children that felt they had a mental health issue, you know, according to NHS research. The loneliness that many of us, many people have experienced, but especially within children, 74% of young people surveyed by Bernardo said they found it hard, hard to maintain friendships in lockdown. We see it all the time in our sessions. We really like to think that the power of the sport to bring people together and, and to reignite those friendships, but also introduce new friendships and connect children with their communities. And again, that's something we'll come on to a little bit later. And that lost learning and development that, again, you'll all be familiar with and all those challenges that, that that's thrown up. The, the fact that everybody's playing catch up. And one thing I will say, I'm, I'm gonna leave the discussion on the program to, to the experts, the likes of Emma and Ian, but um, a lot of what we do, everything we do is linked to the national curriculum, it's linked to physical literacy, and we don't wanna provide more work for teachers and for schools. That's the last thing we wanna do. We wanna make people's lives easier. And that's, that's what we set out to do as a charity. What are our programs? The most relevant one today is our, our primary school program. Um, it's where we work, as I say, with one in four uh, schools across the country. Our delivery network is, is managed through the 39 county cricket boards across England, Wales, and most recently Cricket Scotland, who we were delighted to have on board in the last 12 months or so. So we're sending the specialist coaches into schools 
often for a half term of cricket around six weeks to, to support those schools with, with coaching. Um, we also have street projects, over 200 street cricket projects up and down the country. Um, they're in the most deprived areas of England, more often than not, cities such as London, um, plenty in Nottingham, Birmingham. Um, over 80% of the participants in those, those street projects are uh, from minority ethnic backgrounds. And also they're, they're in the, the most deprived areas, the most deprived wards of the country, as I say. It's to give those children the opportunity of an out-of-school uh, cricket opportunity they wouldn't otherwise have had. And also our Girls Leadership Programme, which is a fantastic, relatively new initiative for us as a charity for the last couple of years. Um, I'd encourage you to head to our website. There's a fantastic piece of research on there funded by our partners at NAS West, who have, have kind of evidenced the impact that that's had on, on girls, particularly in secondary schools uh, throughout the country. And one thing I think we actually take for granted sometimes as a charity, uh, and I often forget to mention, but it's all free. Um, you know, obviously we raise funds, and we work with fantastic partners such as ECB, um, the likes of NatWest and Yorkshire Tea, our commercial partners, and of course the, the major donors we have, so that there's no cost to schools, there's no cost to the communities, to the participants. That's what we're here to do. And I think that's a massive strength for our programme that we probably think is so self-evident, we actually don't shout about it enough, um, but it is free of charge to the schools we work in. Okay, so that's enough from me. You'll be, you'll be glad to know that um, I won't be the one rabbiting on for the majority of this webinar. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm gonna pass over to, to Emma at Youth Sports Trust, who, who's gonna give us a quick overview of, of what they're about as an organization and, and what they've been doing partnering with, with Chance to Shine over the last year or two. So over to Emma. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware, um, Youth Sport Trust, um, we have been around for about 25 years um, and we have experience working in partnership with schools, wider stakeholders and partners. And we are the leading charity for improving the education and development of every child through play and sport. And that's where we obviously massively align with Chance to Shine in terms of our philosophies, our approach, and ultimately the mission um, in really ensuring that we can engage all young children um, through purposeful, active, safe and enjoyable lessons, which absolutely we know the Chance to Shine programme and resources um, are so impactful in doing. We've had the privilege of working um, in partnership with Chance to Shine over, yeah, probably 18 months now, it seems it's flown by, um, but really redeveloping the school's programme and resources, which we're going to be talking you through today. Um, as I said, massively aligns with our own philosophy and particularly our work and vision for PE, um, really making sure that we're not only developing the physical competences of our young people, but looking at that the holistic development of the whole child, where we do shine a spotlight on the mental all the social and the personal development aspects as well so that's been a key component in terms of everything that we've been developing with these resources so all young people can um, you know define cricket as a game for them um, and a game for everyone um, and can really find success within their, their cricketing pathway um, so yeah I'm looking forward to talking you through in a little bit more detail later on in some of that that work um, that you can absolutely benefit from um, as a school for your young people. Um, and I believe I'm handing over to, to Ian now. Yeah, definitely. But just before we jump over to Ian, actually, I think it prompted by something Emma said there about cricket being a game for everyone. I think it probably be remiss of all of us, especially us at Chance to Shine, to um, head through this webinar today talking about, we're honestly proud about the inspirational work that we do in, in, many, in many places in the UK and, and what cricket can do for people without referencing everything that's gone in the game for the last couple of weeks. I'm sure you'll be all too familiar with the um, the issues that were, were found in Yorkshire and the quite striking and, and heartbreaking at times testimony of Azim Rafiq in, in front of the select committee last week and all the revelations that came up before, during and after that select committee. So I guess just to reiterate that as a charity, you know, it, was, it was and is devastating for us to see everything that's come out. Um, you know, we are, of course, remain so passionate about the power of this sport and what it can do for people. Just myself being out in the community over the last couple of weeks or so, speaking to our coaches, um, speaking to the participants in Yorkshire and elsewhere, everyone has been um, you know, pretty bereft about what's happening at the moment. But one thing that everybody's in agreement of, um, from ourselves to the other partners within cricket, all the way across the communities, is that change is required and improvements do need to be made. Um, and that's something that everybody's going to be working together on over, over the next few weeks, months and years. But I guess we are certainly resolute that 
cricket is such an incredible sport and can be such a force for good. And it's more important than ever that we focus our work on that and that we have conversations like we're having today. So I just thought it, it's really important to address that because it has been um, such a tough couple of weeks for everybody within the cricketing community. Um, but yeah, focusing back on those programmes, as you said, Emma, um, Ian has been working so hard with, with everybody on, on the, the new set of resources and on the Chance to Shine programme. So I'm going to head over to Ian now, who's going to talk us a little bit through um, all that work he's been doing and, and what we're doing moving forward. Right, am I slide showing, Ross? You are slide showing indeed. Lovely, thank you very much. I think just to kind of build on from what both Ross and Emma said there, we, we think we're in a, a really great position now to move things forward very positively and to give all children a fantastic experience of the game that all of us here love and hopefully you guys are joining today sharing this within your schools we know that we can make a huge difference to the lives of young people um but also we're, we're recognizing here that we we're, we're not at a standing start there's been so much learning that we've had a chance to shine over the past 16 years and and also since launching our digital resources in september 2017 getting so many teachers on board accessing that content we know there's been some amazing work out in the network but we felt this was the right time to refresh those and, and to actually understand what is the current environment that we're in, what do young people need most right now. And this is why we partner with Youth Sport Trust, because we are a cricket charity. I guess we understand sport and the benefits it can bring. But to partner with Youth Sport Trust and bring in their educational knowledge expertise to really bring those two things together and make a huge difference here and to make sure that we've got content resources that work for you as teachers, that work for your schools, and most importantly, make sure that the young people that you inspire, engage every day, get the most out of it. So that, that's that's what we're here to do, and that's hopefully what we're going to showcase around the resources today. So we've already referenced this already, but our, our purpose as a charity within the primary school program, it's that first connectivity. It's developing a love of the game of cricket, but importantly, the wider well-being that goes with it. So you'll start to hear a lot of things around actually what are we doing in terms of developing life skills of young people and our new curriculum content is, is directly linked into that. What are our objectives? Well, Emma referenced this, the point in the centre, it's those four words. It's about being purposeful, active, safe and enjoyable. And I guess the interesting point for you as teachers kind of seeing this is this really connects as a pathway between what our coaches do when they're trained out in the community. So the language links in now with how we work on what we call the foundational level one course. There's a real kind of symmetry between the two things. And the bits around the outside, that really is about you as teachers and supporting the children that you inspire. So it is about more than cricket, it's developing the whole child. It's about developing your confidence and the confidence of the children and supporting you through this process as much as we can. Um, already referenced, we're working around one, one in four state, school, state primary schools each year. But of course, there will be schools who can benefit directly from a chance to shine coach, but these resources are completely open to anyone. So it is about using them to support you and your needs. We want you and we want children to say that cricket's a game for me in terms of personal experience, but ultimately we want the recognition that anyone can play this, anyone can develop this, everyone has got the opportunity to kind of engage and connect in. And that final objective at the bottom, it, it is a recognition of where we currently are. I know you, you will be all too familiar with the kind of recovery curriculum and that phrase used, but we know we need to do that. We need to have sport, PE, physical activity that's positioned to help children recover from the, the significant challenges in the pandemic. Um, and, and that all of this was a foundation behind which we built our new content. So in terms of that content, um, we've got a few kind of component headers. So um, I've, I've kind of linked the, the source here, the, the Chance to Shine strategy narrative, which we'll share afterwards with, with the recording. But each of these bullet pointed areas here, we've developed brand new resources on. So the Inspire resources, though that, in, on the whole is our assembly content. So that first connectivity with the program, the opportunity to engage that whole school through an assembly that talks about life skill development. It looks at 
the skills of the game of cricket. It connects those two things together and allows children to reflect on actually what is valued here. And actually that will really nicely tee up a programme. So it is about inspiring the audience in front of you. And we've got some really great assembly resources to support that. So three, three assemblies in total, one pre-programme, one to celebrate at the end to, to assess progress and also a brilliant life skills programme um, in the middle that talks about character development and the benefit of cricket. The play content, this is, I guess, the, the core of our programme. So when we talk about play, we talk about playing the game of cricket. It's broken down into key stage one, key stage two lower and key stage two upper. And there is a, a kind of a, a half term of activity for each of those key stage segments. So those that have had chance to shine coaches within your schools, you'll be familiar with this. This is the, the content that you see out on the playground. And actually it's there for you to take. There's lesson plans to download. And we'll, I'll explain a little bit more detail of that shortly. Lead, this is about giving you the skills to lead. So it's informal CPD, it's formalized CPD courses, but also it's about leadership skills of the children. So we've designed a brand new key stage two playground leaders course. So hopefully through whether you get that program or whether you go, down, go and download the content yourself, there's some really great simple practices that we can give those older students within a primary school setting the opportunity to learn, develop those skills and support and inspire younger children in the school. Compete, this is intra-competition and inter-competition. And we've been very clear on how these resources provide a journey through to connecting with the school games, but also connecting in with the, the brand new ECB format, which is Dynamo Schools. So that replaces Quick Cricket. Um, it links in now with the 100. It's got a scoring app. There's some really great content now on the portal to make you familiar with that. And that is the, the directed format now for cricket at primary schools within the school games. And finally, Pathway, it's about that connectivity with other opportunities. So we're, we're incredibly lucky as a sport to have two brilliant national programmes. We've got All Stars Cricket for five to eight year olds and Dynamos Cricket for eight to 11 year olds. There's a, and also there are obviously other opportunities, but those two national programs provide a real consistent and brilliant means of connecting with cricket out of school. So we've got resources that kind of give a taste of that experience and all of our contents aligned there as well. We just referenced also at the bottom here around our learn resources. Now we haven't redeveloped our learn resources as part of this program because we felt that actually they are fit for purpose. So they're all still on the portal that can be downloaded. And these are our cross-curricular resources, English, maths, geography, a whole host of stuff that you can take cricket into the classroom and use to inspire children through. So the play programme, as we mentioned, this is the core of what we do. So here we're thinking about that activity out on the playground in the indoor hall. And really we, we've kind of built this around the ambition of developing the skills to become a confident cricketer. So that is every, whether it's key stage one, key stage two lower, key stage two upper, that ambition's the same to give children the motivation, confidence and competence to go out there and say, look, I can play this game. And how we build up through the course of the half term programme is, is exactly what these resources do. As Ross referenced as well, there's this direct connectivity from these lesson plans and content into how we deliver this as part of the national curriculum. And you'll see on the right hand side of this screen here, um, the ferocious field session just given as an example around, well, how does this lesson link in with the components of the national curriculum? We reference kind of the, the character development and kind of that through it. So you, you'll start to see some of these diagrams. So you see the, the kind of ferocious field, the character, and um, the little diagram of the confident cricketer that we've got on this slide. Our ambition is to support the children to become that character. And how we do that will be developing physical skills, life skills that connect, but also supporting them with some teaching, learning points that we've turned the keys to success. So as, you, as you'll see, for example, on this plan, within the ferocious field session that focuses on throwing, we're talking about developing a strong side on position aiming towards the target with your non-throwing arms. So you'll see some real little simple guidance in there to help develop those skills to become that ferocious fielder or the cool catcher. 
as I mentioned, split across the different key stage segments, and we've got six character themes as well. We know that the average length of a half term is, is around about six weeks, and so we developed a programme that can be used across that to develop those skills to be the confident cricketer. Now, of course, if you've got longer terms, if you want to go longer, there's extension activities, there's other challenges, there's, there's so much more on there you can use, but that's kind of what we've used as a kind of an overline header on that. We reference the characters. I can't look at this slide without kind of putting a grin on my face, really, because I think these really do showcase the fun element of the Chance to Shine programme. So why do they exist? Well, they give a little bit of ambition, a bit of a feel around kind of different skills involved in cricket. But actually, they all work together as a team to become that confident cricketer. So if you were working across the course of a six week half term, there's a lesson plan for bowling, which is brilliant bowler. There's cool capture, there's ferocious field, a super striker, skillful scorer. Deliver all of those together, then the children that we work with, support and engage will then have the skills to take part in the intra-competition confident cricket session at the end of that. And actually these characters have got so much scope. You can use them for reflection. You can use them for kind of plenary activities at the end, put a poster up on the wall and say, well, what did we do today to become that super striker? What were the skills? What were the keys to success? So we feel that they can really help bring those lessons to life. In terms of what sits behind this all, we've, we've spoken, Emma spoke at the start about youth sports trust philosophy around kind of the physical, healthy, social me. We, we've made a direct connection here between our content and how we develop both physical and life skills. And through the lesson plans, it's very, very clear in how those will come out, both through questioning, but having a specific focus. So what I'm just sharing here, this is our, our skills matrix. Um, each lesson plan does have one specific life skill aligned to it. Now it's important to say that dependent on the needs of your class, on the needs of your school, absolutely you can chop and change these in. But we've designed the games, the practices within these lessons because we feel that they bring out these skills and we can really obviously support children in this development through it. So just as an example, or key stage two upper, cool capture. Resilience is the life skill here. So what have we got? We've got a load of challenging coaching and uh, catching and throwing activities that really do support children to actually say, well, how am I going to develop my skills? What am I going to do if I drop the ball? How can I challenge myself? If I'm finding it really easy, I can't develop that skill of resilience. So I've got to try something new to really push myself and develop that skill. And then hopefully it'll be really obvious when you look at the lesson plans, how we can bring these skills to life. And how do we develop them? Well, firstly, as we've said, we, we outline a lesson objective through a life skill as well as a physical skill. As teachers, as coaches of this, we give an example of how it might appear. So some of that, those examples I just gave called Catcher, how do we develop resilience? Well, we have to learn potentially if we're really challenging ourselves, what's the highest catch that you can throw or highest ball you can throw and still catch it? What happens if we drop it? What do we need to do? How can we support our teammates? And then what do we do? Well, we've got some example questions and we review with them through those questions on how they've applied that skill and what they could do to develop it further. So you'll see within the lesson plans, the, the, the links as we've got on the left hand side. So, for example, this session here talks about collaboration, which is how can we be a supportive member of the team? Reflective questions that you can use. Well, what do we need to do to work well as a team? And then we've got kind of further reflective questions as we go through the content, through the activities about, well, why is it important to listen to everyone? So this is just one example of that in practice. As we said, there will be certain sessions that will be more effective at developing skills. So, for example, if you're working on your own, then clearly those personal skills will be greater supported and developed. Whereas those sessions that have teamwork elements, have games, will involve social skills, problem solving. So you're going to develop empathy and collaboration really obviously through that. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of how we apply that and put that into practice. So how do we bring this to life? How can we support you? What have you got as a support mechanism to make the very best cricket lessons that you can?
can. Well, firstly, each lesson plan has got video content aligned to it. So through a QR code on the, plan, just, uh, on the plan, just scan that and you will see examples of those games and practices pop up. Now it's important to say we, we captured those in real live environments. So you will see children bowling with bent arms, throwing it rather than bowling. You will see balls being dropped. You'll also see some examples of really great skills where actually children are shown those life skills, but perhaps not achieving what you might think is the perfect cricket technique. But that's great, okay? That's real, and that's what you, we work with, and that's what you work with day to day. And what we've got then is the drip feed of questions, the keys to success to help bring that to life. Within each lesson, the structured content, it's got suggested extension activities. It's also got links on where next. So once we've done this lesson, well, what connects into it ideally at the next point? And also we want to be really clear around our consistency of messages. So the competition framework, the activities that we've got in play directly give the skills and the confidence for children to take part in those school games activities, in those skills festivals, those skills challenges. It's all connected. So there's a golden thread that goes through it. And what else have we got? We've referenced this already, but we've got some great Playground leaders content, so how to further develop leadership skills and life skills of those older students. Those are easily accessible. There's game cards, practices that you can literally just hand to them and let them run with it and support them with. We've got simple skills challenges. We've got skills festivals, which are linkages and bringing those things together. And as we mentioned before, we've also got the Dynamo schools format on there as well. So you can see how through working here, connecting with Youth Sport Trust and the school games, we've got a really clear process behind how we can develop children through them. And that's a very whistle stop <laughs> tour of that. So I'm gonna hand back to Ross now, but guys, just really use this. We know you've got the skills to inspire and engage children. These resources are completely there for you to use and we want to hear from you, we want to see how they're put into action and all I can say is like you'll have great fun doing it, they certainly will, so go out there and use them and inspire. Thanks very much Ian, I really appreciate that, it's a, it's a lot to fit in, um, but I think it's so, so important and hopefully that gave you a real, real feel for what there is in terms of resources out on offer and what the logic is behind them. Um, love to ask some questions of our panel now. Um, well, Dana, to, to start off with you, I guess everyone who's joined the call today will be really familiar with the, the new Ofsted inspection framework and the challenges that that, that brings with it. I mean, for yourself, um, how has that changed the, the delivery of, of PE in your school and, and in the schools that you, you've worked with and, and the colleagues that you know across the country? Um, I think for us, well, I think it's presented an opportunity. I think PE has had a questionable status in some schools over the years because of the perception that Ofsted wouldn't look at PE in the same way that it does the other core subjects. But actually this framework is encouraging a lack of narrowing. And if anything, it is insisting upon, do you really have a good plan? Have you got an end point? Do you have the steps to actually support children getting there? And does it include all learners? And where PE, in my opinion, really benefits the whole curriculum is it doesn't just contribute to quality of teaching, quality of education, but you could really crack your personal development aspect of this framework if your PE has a very deliberate focus on, you guys call it life skills with chance to shine, we called them our personal development objective, so using that same language and a deliberate mapping of what we want our young people to experience through the physical so that they become active and informed citizens. Obviously, it comes down to the three eyes. If you know what your intent is, and for my team, it was to ignite a passion for lifelong movement. That's what we're trying to sell. That's what we're trying to develop. And then we thought really carefully about the best way to implement it. Is it accessing resources I'm a secondary lead. We use Chance to Shine resources because actually for some of our young people, they haven't had that cookies experience at primary. And so the building blocks to allow them to then become the leaders of our primary feeder schools has been a really important step. So what the resource provides teachers is high quality education using information that teachers need to use. I need to know about the framework and I need to trust 
any resource that I am bringing into my curriculum to ensure that it allows us to implement things with integrity, with depth. And then it gives us the openness to think about the best way to respond to our context. Um, and for us, the impact has been we've got more student leaders, we've got more of the non-doers coming back into PE and more young people that understand the bigger picture that if I learn how to overcome struggle, maybe in trampolining, I then might be able to apply that same mindset to my cricket aspect of learning and then to my classroom learning. And, and it, it is very much about using it as an asset and as a PE teacher where the new framework doesn't want you to necessarily follow your old school's assessment format. It's given us more license to go back to our senior leaders and go, we need to assess this subject differently in order to meet the needs of our young people, but also to better prepare us. And so it's given myself as a leader and my team the chance to really pull the, pull the roots up, as it were. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's brilliant. It makes sense. And I mean, you mentioned their trampolining down there, and obviously you've got experience in other sports as well. Emma, to chuck it over to you, uh, we talk a lot at Chance of Shine about the unique benefits of cricket, and obviously it's something that the likes of myself or Ian could talk about all day. Interested in your perspective as someone who works across a lot of sports, Emma, and what for you are the unique benefits of cricket? Because, you know, it's, it's not to say that there aren't lots and lots of benefits of all the other sports that children interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. My background's in football before I came to Chance to Shine, worked in that sport for many years, something I'm very passionate about, but what did you see in cricket that you think was unique in terms of the benefits it, it gave to children? Yeah, well, I think it, you know, from a physical perspective, um, as Ian's clearly outlined in terms of the programme, it really develops that range of physical competences very much across your locomotion, stability and your object control. You know, whether it is the ball handling, the batting, the running, the striking and fielding. Um, and I guess the benefit of that is not only the physical development, but also for all young people to experience success. You know, there's so many components there that they can really thrive upon um, and, and really experience success within their own sort of journey and their own physical competence. But more than that, I guess it is the, the personal skills that we talk about and the personal development agenda, um, because everything is so explicit in cricket. You know, it, it's not where we're trying to link a life skill because we feel there's a need there. It absolutely comes across so explicitly within the nature of the sport. Um, you know, we have the individual component, um, but we also have them playing collectively as a team. If we look at the super striker element and, and what Ian outlined in terms of the focus we've had around resilience, self-awareness, awareness and decision making you can absolutely see how within you know striking and, and batting those life skills can really be enhanced and and really young people can make that, that key connection so it really does support that development of the whole child but I guess looking more broadly as well it's very inclusive as a sport um, we've got great representation we've got the strength of, of the women's game coming through and really the modernization of the game as well you know we've seen the 2020 the 100 launched this year um, and you know young people being exposed to that and seeing that and seeing how the game can adapt and how they can identify with it is really strong um, and it's got the ability to be played anywhere you know from your garden inside during lockdown within the streets on the beach on the rooftops you know great flexibility there to really build it into to your, your life and um, and uh, that all important love of movement which Dana has spoken about so absolutely hits on so many components definitely it makes me smile when you mentioned about um ability to play everywhere and, and in lockdown um, we launched a set of, of virtual resources which you, you can still actually access through the portal during lockdown and as Ian will testify we saw children joining up and down the country using frying pans and rolled up socks and I guess where there's a will there's a way with any sport and we definitely found that with cricket um Emma touched on there the hundreds uh and, and also the kind of diversity of cricket it seems like a great time to, to bring in Rihanna in that respect Rihanna really just give us a bit of a, a feel for your journey in cricket when you first came across the sport as, as a young girl and how you've come to the position you are today when you were you were starring in a tournament such as the 100 as, as well as coaching out into the community where what was your journey in the sport yes um unfortunately i i, I didn't grow up with um like chance of shine coming into my school or anything like that um come through a when I, when I was younger, it was a really like, typical state school environment. No cricket for girls, it's rounders and netball. Um, fortunately, I come from a really sporty household. Um, my brothers always played football. 
Um, and then when he went to a secondary school, one of the teachers was a cricket coach. Um, still didn't play cricket in school, though, of course. Um, but no, so he started playing cricket at a, a local club. And then I just really didn't like the fact that he got the attention for it. I just couldn't handle it. Um, so I had to start as well. Um, and I just fell in love with it. It's exactly the same as football for me. Um, I I love playing it with my brother and 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 my dad and mum always loved to get involved as well. Um, so I think that's kind of how it started. Um, so I think I was five at the time, and then I was nine when I first got picked up by Surrey. Um, and from there, it was just kind of a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, went through the age groups pretty quickly, always playing up. Um, started playing for the the senior side when I was about fifteen. Um, and then when I hit 15, the women's, the women's game just seemed to just go. Um, and then obviously we've, we've now got like the regional set up in, which means that you can actually see as a, as a young girl, you can make a career out of it. And you don't just have to be an England player. Um, and then obviously then so the 100 as well and it being postponed a year was so disappointing. Um, but... <laughs> It, it, it was might have even benefited the game that it was because people were so eager to get out and watch it after being locked away that it, it yeah again it just kind of went all over again it was like that explosion I saw when I was 15 all over again in front of me um which was incredible it was, yeah, it was just brilliant the whole I think as I said it was just a massive whirlwind um I, I feel like I've blinked and I'm I'm 21 and here I am. <laughs> and obviously yourself, I think doing that coaching in the community as well, you mentioned that the chance to shine wasn't something you were able to access as a youngster. Like how satisfying is it to you to be able to provide those opportunities to be a female role model out in the community and, and, and what benefits as well do you see to, to those young children that you work with each day? Yeah, honestly, it was, it was one of the reasons I wanted to get into it because I didn't have that opportunity. Um, and I wanted to to obviously show all kids, but in particular young girls that like they have someone to look up to. Um, so I, I I absolutely love it, and like I've I've got a few things with me. So when I go into schools, like the kids make me cards when I leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you can see any of them, but um, just stuff like stuff like that. It's just it's so heartwarming to know that you kind of have that impact on them. Um, and I, I've I've worked in in the street programs as well um and obviously like you more older kids um are involved in those um and even even them I've got like 15 year old girls who still want to go on to play for England um it's 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 brilliant it's just the the opportunities are out there and I just want to be a role model to them I think there's there's no denying you certainly are and we um (laughs) <laughs> we're definitely following your career hopefully you'll be a coach for a few years to come but we'll um we'll be following your career of interest over the next few weeks and months um Thanks. gregor's jumping over to you now um i should say i'll call, I'll call ian gregor's on default now it is ian gregory otherwise known as gregor's um we talked about about the impact that cricket has on young people we've seen that the journey of someone like rihanna who obviously didn't come through chance to shine but goes about saying probably a very naturally talented sportsman um not, we're not always going to be working alongside young people like that. So for you, how, how can cricket engage those kids who might not always engage in, in PE and might not be um, kind of that keen on, on taking on sport on a day-to-day basis? I think the first thing, Ross, is we recognise that it is a challenge. Um, and as a result of that, we think about how we have to work with every school that we go into, what's the specific position and how do we position our resources now? We've already referenced this a few times already, but cricket is an incredibly diverse sport in terms of the number of different roles an individual can play within a team environment. So you can be brilliant at catching and just not that confident at batting, but you can still be an incredible contributor to your team. So I think there's something quite unique about the the various different roles and actually how those individual skills, one-on-one battles which is batter versus bowler or batter trying to beat the fielder you get so much of that but you've also got that in a team environment so it will appear appeal to introverts and extroverts it will appeal to those who want to step out and lead and support and make those decisions those that 
that have really got that caring, empathetic side that want to support someone who's had a challenging one-to-one scenario. Maybe they've got out first ball. Look, sport as a whole does that, but I think there is something quite unique about cricket and chance to shine and the diversity and skills that really can engage other children. And also, I want to say a bit about our coach workforce as well. I think you hear that from Rihanna just there, the passion and kind of understanding of the difference you can make and being a role model to young people. Obviously, we're incredibly fortunate to have a brilliant, inspiring coach workforce that really get this as well. So, yes, of course, it's lovely if you get a really skillful cricketer in the sessions that you work with. And brilliant if we can connect them in with their local club or local county programme. But actually, our coaches do go in to think about all of the children. and They have that in the mind. So that support, that focus on impact is, is, is really key there. And I think that makes a, a big difference to our programmes. So, yeah, I'd say just the, the diversity and the focus on, on what is most important, Ross, is, is kind of the, the key to it, really. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. And I guess um, if I'm to bring James in briefly now, we, we talk about the challenges of, of perhaps children who, who might not find P easy, might not find cricket easy. You're someone who's who's done brilliantly over the years in terms of implementing cricket in, in a couple of different primary schools. How do you overcome the challenges of, of teachers, for instance, that might not be that familiar or not that confident in delivering the game? If you're a PE leader or a PE teacher in a school who loves cricket as a sport, how do you go about introducing that sport to others in the school who, who might not be as familiar with it? Yeah, how, how teachers um, find it, um, the fear factor of cricket, if you've never played cricket before, obviously it's a very technical game. So we tried to take the fear factor out of it. And our first thing to do was to um, introduce uh, Middlesex and get Middlesex coaches in. We've got great links um, with the Middlesex Cricket Board, Pete Jones and Sharon Ayres, no excuse. So we get them to come in and deliver six whole days of cricket over the course of a half term. Um, so they get to work with each year group um, for, for the six sessions. And then those teachers that they're working with, they become leaders and then they team teach with their year group. So hopefully increasing their own self-esteem and self-confidence teaching the game. So we take the whole fear factor away. Um, I also provide CPD for those teachers that are struggling. Um, and then we also look to put enthusiastic teachers who actually begin to love it on coaching courses, become um, all-stars activators. Um, also, some are even more enthusiastic and actually doing their coaching badges too. Um, we then in, we have great links also with our local clubs. Uh, we're very lucky in the area where we are. Although we're in a deprived area, we've got a lot of local good local cricket clubs. So we're getting um, some good coaches in from there. Um, we also try and inc- we get some um, like ex pros to come in too. So we've had Scott Newman and Monty Panasar to come in to really, you know, big wow assemblies and master classes. Um, so that's been, um, you know, had a huge impact too. Our school, we now deliver all stars and the Dynamos cricket, and we have over 80 children attending those. We run numerous clubs for all abilities, for all abilities. Um, and the numbers are huge. Even now during the winter, we're running four clubs. We've got three teachers running. Our head teacher loves cricket. He's now running a club. We've got two other teachers, including myself, running it. And we've got a local coach come in and run a club. Um, at play times, used to, used to be a football school here. Football, 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 and football. But now we've taken the footballs out. A child, children are using cricket bats, cricket balls. Cricket is the sport at our school now. And... Um, you know, we still have barriers. We're still struggling to get children into our local clubs. So although we, you know, we introduce cricket and there is a wow factor, um, it's getting them, and our next challenge is transitioning them into local clubs. But we are arranging games against local clubs. We've got two indoor games against our local clubs coming up um, in December. Um, we're also taking 25 children to the Oval on the 10th of December. Um, to be shown around the Oval, another wow factor, um, meet Chevy Green as well in the ACE programme, to have a whack with them. Um, we have school days out at Lords as well to um, keep the enthusiasm going. And now we have our school leaders as well, um, sports leaders are role models and deliver um, sessions to our younger children during break times and lunch times. 
and they love that. Um, so from schools that had zero cricket 18 months ago, now cricket is absolutely thriving in our place now. And, you know, we're even going to be mentioned in the Cricketer magazine on Friday. Yeah, it's, it really is a sight to behold for anyone who has gone down to Heathfield School as we did, junior school as we did over the summer. Um, yeah, it, it's not just during the sessions, during break times, etc. You see the kids getting involved in the sport, which is which is great to see. Um, James mentioned there the, the word barriers, and it's something we've we've seen come up a couple of times today. Um, Dan, if I can bring you back in just just one final time, um, it's it's a stat we often see that children from a, a low socioeconomic background, from sort of some of those kind of tougher areas in, in that respect and also children from a minority ethnic background that are less likely to engage in political activity. Um, how do we overcome those barriers and, and, and what experience have you had in terms of helping children to, to overcome those barriers in certain schools over the years? Well I think it goes without saying it's a really complicated multi-layered problem and contextually there are so many other factors um, but you can't be what you can't see. And actually, one of the beauties of cricket, the representation is there. It is absolutely there to be exploited in the players that are participating for their countries, male and female, the 100, T20. And so if you are a teacher or a school trying to look for um, representation within sport to be able to connect in the first instance, cricket makes it very, very easy. And you've talked about the resources that can help in the classroom. Well, if they are featured and children are starting to learn about, oh, hang on a minute, there's a cricket player that is also Sikh or also Hindu or also Muslim or wears a headscarf or from whatever context, they start to, first of all, you're getting the reinforcers that you can belong here. You can absolutely belong here. I think then as well as a school, historically, we've held on to the PE uniform with, with a tight rein and actually maybe now, for people from low income families, from minority ethnic groups, have a unisex PE kit, first of all, a non-gendered PE kit and let the children choose. If you can't afford a waterproof, a jumper, a t-shirt, a second t-shirt, wh why do we need all of those barriers putting in place? There is a base PE kit. There are more things if you want them, but actually if that's the barrier, could a department, could a school, have some that they just give to those children in the first instance and say there you go that's for attending your chance to shine sessions or whatever it is however you use it because of we know which families we know which children I think one of the other things you know James talked about the the, the excite moments getting people in taking children on trips for I'm very fortunate as a as a Muslim girl I was always given the chance to see what was out there but for many families there is that fear factor of what the world that they don't access looks like. So if you can, can that trip include the parents, take them with you, get them to buy in, get them to see that this is a completely inclusive environment, one where their characteristics as being a minority are celebrated. And if you can, given cricket's nature and the way the game is played, why not invite parents to join in on those sessions as well? Why not use the school as a hub? These children from low income families and minority groups, they come to school. So host and use the school site because that's a non-threatening environment or go to community centers and work with the local imams and think about when it's Ramadan, could we do some iftar cricket and have a street session that happens after you've broken fast as a family event? Because cricket's wonderful from, if I use my own faith as a Muslim, it's a wonderful game because there's no contact. And that's a big, big thing. And it's not about objectivity of my body either as a performer. And I think a lot of this is about teachers understanding what it means to be from a minority group and then becoming educated about some of the issues, talking to um, people from those communities so that they then don't have that same fear factor of perhaps not knowing about cricket. It's knowing which conversations can you have and knowing it's completely safe to try and want to make it better. And so it's a lot about collaboration, listening, using the facilities and using the resources that these communities are already accessing and removing some of the barriers that sometimes have been there because of tradition. We don't need lots of different types of PE kit, just come in something that you can get sweaty in and this is it. That's, that's the baseline that we're looking for. And the wonderful thing about Chance to Shine, you can play it with a frying pan and a pair of socks. I did it during lockdown. It is a very easy thing to start 
And, you know, if you've got children from minority backgrounds learning a skill at school, make the homework, teach it to your mum. If you can teach it to your mum and then they see that it's non-threat themselves, they might then allow that child to come to a breakfast club or to stay for an extra hour after school or to come on a Saturday morning. And I think it's about having permission to be creative because people want to play, but they're just scared of what they've never experienced. Yeah, that's right. That's so true. And as you say, it's an incredibly complex issue and there's not one answer, but um, it's worth looking at. Actually, you, you mentioned briefly there, Dana, around Ramadan and, and um, how you can be as accessible as possible at that time of year. If, if you Google uh, Ramadan Street Project, there's some amazing work that Warwick actually did actually in the last couple of years uh, around that to, to help children and, and young people who are of the Muslim faith to, to get involved in cricket late at night in Birmingham. Putting taxis back and forth to Wedgebaston to the Nets, etc. is a really powerful story. There's a couple of YouTube videos and news reports on it. It's, it's well worth looking at. Um, they've done some fast and fantastic work, as, as Ian knows very well, having worked alongside them. Um, I'm really conscious of time and, and not wanting to keep everyone here late on a, on a Tuesday night. So just to finish off, Ian, with yourself, I guess um, important for us to emphasise that there's obviously only so much work that we as Chance of Shine can, can do in terms of schools and communities as, as much as our funding allows us to do. We're in around one in four schools, as, as we say, which is a, about our limit for now. Hopefully in future that changes, we'd love to be working in every single school in the UK. Um, but Ian, how, how can schools get involved and embrace the sport if, if they're not lucky enough to have a chance to shine um, coach with, within their school in any given year? What would you recommend as, as the next steps in that respect? I think, Ross, the, the first thing is, is to actually have that conversation with your local deliverers. So we've referenced here around delivery around the UK. We've got 39 county cricket boards. Um, we've also got Cricket Wales Cricket Scotland, part of that in terms of direct coaching delivery. Speak to them, see what they can offer. I, I previously managed the programme in Shropshire. There was very few times where a school would approach me that there wouldn't be something that I could support with. Of course, funding only allows us to go so far, and it might be that you can't have a coach in for that half term, but you might be able to have a coach who comes in for an engagement day or what we term an engagement day. So one, one day where they can come in, deliver to as many classes as possible, do a whole day festival, do an assembly, engage with parents. So what Dana just spoke about there, we've got assembly resources that talk and invite parents in to talk about the benefits of the game. So even though it might just be one day, add-on benefits of that can go much further. Um, to speak to them, to see what's possible. Of course, there's the resources, everything that we've spoken about today, the ability to access them. Any teacher in your school can access these. Any teacher can have a login. So go on there, there's more support online. And look, we know that you've got the skills to bring this to life. You are experts in your children. It's just about then lay, overlaying that with resources that talk a bit about a different sport with cricket being our example. So, yeah, have that conversation, have a look, explore the resources, sign up, share it with other people and then decide, well, what is the best fit for this? What elements of this programme are going to work? Link back to, well, what is our intent for our PE curriculum? How does it fit? How can it develop all the children within our school? So, yeah, that, that would be my guidance. Always start with that conversation, see what's possible, and then, then take it from there. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks very much. On that note, well, I'm going to open the floor up to questions from, from anyone who's joined, any of the participants in today's call. Um, if you could just put them into the Q&A, the chat, then we'll try and answer as many as possible for those who do have any questions. Um, whilst you're doing that, I think quite an opportune time from, from Ian's introduction there, just to quickly talk you through um, how to access the resources that, that are out there already. Um, hopefully you can see my screen and I'm looking for your thumbs up as always there to yep. make sure that they're pretty. Right. Um, so this is our, the Chance to Shine portal. Um, hopefully a lot of you will be familiar with this already. If not, you access it by heading to teachers.chancetoshine.org. Just Google Chance to Shine resources. It, it'll be in the first couple of, of results. Um, we've done some work over this on this over the last couple of years or so not just in terms of producing uh, additional and improved content that we spoke about today, but in terms of the layout of the site. So um, once you're there, even if you're not logged in, um, you'll be able to browse the site. Um, you'll be able to access uh, not just uh, the resources themselves, but also a lot of information on who we are as a charity and, and why we feel that cricket could be a real powerful sport in, in school and community. So there's, there's that fantastic case study that we alluded to earlier 
uh, at James and, and Heathfield Junior School. You can watch a video there that tells you a little bit about how they embrace cricket. Um, you can also uh, learn a bit more about our resources, going into some extra detail of some of the bits and pieces that, that Ian and, and Emma have spoken around today, our play program, what it's designed to do and how, how it's implemented and, and how we work alongside teachers to transition uh, cricket into schools. So well worth looking at. But of course, the, the main piece is, is the resources themselves. Um, so uh, if you head to the resource hub at the top here, we've tried to make it as easy as possible to, to find the resource that best suits you. So as if you're on Amazon or other shopping sites are available, you can filter by key stage, um, you can filter by the development focus, whether it's mental, social, personal, whatever it might be. Um, you can filter by an activity focus, so bowling, catching, batting, leadership, maths, English, Ian spoke about the learn resources we host earlier, or even the location, whether it's stuff you want to be able to do at home, Woe betide, there's another lockdown coming up, but were, were there were something like that to crop up, we do have those virtual resources or in the crowd, in the uh, classroom, in the playground, etc. Um, once you open the resource themselves, um, if you're not logged in, you can still access a, a summary of the program, um, a kind of top line summary of, of, of the resource itself, of the content, what it's aimed to do, some of the key tips. Um, once you log in, once you register, it's completely free to register. You just enter your email address and what school you're from. Um, you'll be able to watch the session videos that Ian mentioned himself earlier. You'll be able to download the resource in a, in a nice PDF format. Um, we've also got uh, lines of support there where you can contact us to ask any questions, whether that's technical support, whether that's support over the resources themselves. Um, and there's even a form there if you want to request cricket or coaching in your school. We alluded to we can't work in every single school in the UK, but on a year by year basis, we work with our delivery partners, those county boards out in, in the network to decide what schools will be most suitable to, to deliver in this year. And who knows, you could have the likes of Rihanna coming into your school to, to coach the kids. Um, so well worth taking a look at that. We will share um, the extra resources to those who are out on our, on our coaching database um, uh, and on our email database, I should say. Uh, after this call and, and over the next few weeks and months as, as resources become available. Um, fantastic. Any other questions that anybody wish to ask, please do um, drop us a line now. Um, if not, we are a couple of minutes over time. I'm conscious of that. So um, I want to make sure everyone's able to get on their way. Um, just one coming here, say, I'm a trainee teacher with not a massive understanding within cricket teaching. I've been teaching cricket recently to Key Stage 3 and have been using your resources and adapting it to suit the needs of the groups. Um, are there any further links or resources out there so I can develop the Key Stage 3's under further understanding on this website? Um, Ian, without putting you too much on the spot, I guess looking at looking at Key Stage 3 resources, whether it's Chance to Shine or, or elsewhere, we know there's a lot of brilliant resources out there. What is there anything in particular you'd recommend? Yeah, I, th I think the first thing, obviously, Ross, we spent most of the day focusing on the new primary school programme resources. There are Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 uh, sessions, content, skills challenges on there. So LOE's certainly worth looking at those and see if they fit the need. Um, what I would say is, is look across the resources and see what you can use and adapt. All of the content has got the, the step process um, across it. So how do we change space, task, equipment, people to develop that on further? So there's, there's so much you can do with that to take a, a real simple session onto that next level. Um, there are other resources as well. So the iCoach Cricket resource, which is um, what, what we use on ECB coaching courses, that's got more technical skills and development. So if you feel, OK, we've got to a bit of a ceiling with what is here on Chance to Shine, that's definitely the next step. So if you were interested in qualifying as a cricket coach, that's the resource that you're linked into and it's got the curriculum for All Stars Cricket and Dynamos Cricket on there as well. So, yeah, see what you, you can use from ours, but yeah, there's certainly more that we can we can link into and take on further. So I, I coach cricket, brilliant resource to support uh, cricket development as well. Great, thanks Ian. I should note, by the way, um, I think there was a, a comment that came in, just a hello from Lisa in, in Kilkenny in Ireland. I said, oh, whilst we don't deliver directly in Ireland at the moment, I should say that we had uh, formed a partnership and have formed a partnership with Cricket Ireland to produce a bespoke set of uh, resources which are um, tailored to both the Irish and the uh, Northern Irish curriculum. So if you do um, browse, the, browse the portal that I spoke about just now, you'll be able to locate them. And uh, yes, whilst we might not be able to shift our coaches over there, uh, in the next year or so, who knows what will happen in future. Um, just certainly in terms of indirect delivery, those, those facilities and those resources are there for, for those schools in Ireland and, and Northern Ireland. 
Um, any other questions before, before we wrap this up for, for the evening? Thank you much to everyone for their support, especially and for their thanks. I'm glad people have found the session useful. Um, one other point I'd make is that feedback is so important to us as a charity in everything we do. Um, I can see that lots of people are using the resources already. That's amazing. Whether you've used them in the past or planning to use them for the first time, be brutally honest. Feedback, whether it's directly to myself or Ian or whether it's using the, the, the contact us functionality on the portal, let us know what you think about them, the pros, the cons. We're always trying to iteratively develop things and, and that feedback is really, really useful. Um, the other thing I'd say is that we are, as I say, we're going to um, share some further details on, on our programs and our resources uh, to those who are signed up to the teachers portal already. So do sign up if you haven't um, done today. It's completely free of charge and it does allow you to, to allow us to contact you to let you know about any other kind of developments in our program. And I'll also be sharing this recording from today to, to everyone who's signed up to the portal and, and who's joined our webinar. Um, so if you can do share it with any colleagues who weren't able to join today. We'll be posting it out on our social media channels as well, and hopefully it'll be useful for people to watch back. Um, so brilliant. Just left for me to say thanks to Ian, to James, to Dana, to Emma, to Rihanna for joining and giving up their time today. We really appreciate that. We're uh, so much at the mercy of these type of great people as a charity who give up their time for free on a regular basis. And it really does make a massive difference. So thank you very much to everybody. And hopefully we'll be coming out and seeing some of you in, in the schools and communities around the country soon. Um, and seeing cricket in action. But we really appreciate your time. And have a wonderful Tuesday evening, a wonderful week, and a wonderful Christmas. Thanks very much. <laughs>